Now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, presents the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. And King, one Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Quaker Pup Wheat and Quaker Pup Rice, bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Say, the owl is a wise old bird, and here's my idea of someone who's plenty smart, too. It's the person who eats a breakfast of Quaker Pup rice or Quaker Pup wheat with milk or cream and fruit. For school, work, or play, remember, rice or wheat shot from guns furnishes added food values of restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. Delicious, too. Yes, be smart. Enjoy this breakfast treat, Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat. The only light in the study came from the lamp on Kane Duncan's desk. It struck Kane's face in such a way that the ordinarily handsome features were made grotesque, hideous, and evil. Kane's sharp eyes followed his brother Joseph as the older man paced the floor in front of the desk. Finally, he spoke. If you can't face the facts, I will. In three months, we must turn Jeff's trust fund over to him. We've embezzled $100,000 of his money. He's our nephew. He won't prosecute. Perhaps not. But you and I will be paupers. If he had only been killed with his mother and father. Ah. You and I are his only heirs. Yes. If Jeff were dead, we'd have nothing to worry about. We think alike, Joe. (laughs) Have you pursued that thought to its logical conclusion? (laughs) How can we commit murder? How? And get away with it, I mean. Shall I tell you how? Well, I... Yes. Tell me, Well, ever since Switzerland last year, the boys wanted to do some more mountain climbing. I've talked about Polaris in the Yukon as being a peak worthy of our metal. It would be simple to get there. Nine out of every ten ships that leave port are heading for Skagway. We have all the necessary equipment. It would be easy to persuade the boy. It's pretty late in the year to climb a mountain like Polaris. Why? You might run into a blizzard. If we did, the accident would be easy to explain, wouldn't it? The uh, accident. Shall I use another word? No, no. If the boy and I start up that mountain, he'll never come down alive. Well, what do you think? It would be wonderful. Wouldn't it? I'll suggest the trip tomorrow. The sooner the better, Kane. When Kane suggested the mountain climbing expedition to his nephew the following day, the young man was enthusiastic. A week later, Jeff said goodbye to Joseph Duncan and Mrs. Scott, Kane's housekeepers. I'd better be getting on board. Uncle Kane will be wondering what's happened to me. Goodbye, Uncle Joe. I'm sorry I'm coming with us. Well, somebody in this family has to work. (laughs) I'm glad I'm not the one. Goodbye, Ava. Take care of yourself, Mr. Jeff. We'll never get to the top of Mount Polaris if we don't. Don't you worry. (laughs) There's a whistle. Goodbye, Jeff. Goodbye, Goodbye, Ava. Goodbye. The following day, Mrs. Scott decided to take advantage of Kane Duncan's absence to give his study a thorough cleaning. As she was dusting his desk, she happened to touch a button concealed in the ornate molding, and a secret door sprang open. Land of mercy. A diary bound in green Morocco fell out, open to the last page where an entry had just been made. She started to pick up the diary and replace it in the compartment when her eyes caught the last sentence. She reread it and then turned back a few pages. 
true. He means to kill him. Her first thought was to get in touch with Joseph Duncan, and she called his office. But Joseph Duncan was not in town. I'm sorry, Mrs. Scott. I can't help how urgent it is. Mr. Joseph won't be back until tomorrow or the day after. He's gone to Portland. Then I can't wait. I'll have to go myself. I'm going to take the first steamer that's leaving here for Skagway. For Skagway? Yes, I'll write Mr. Joseph a letter explaining everything and send it over to the office by hand. And don't you dare let anyone open it but Mr. Joseph himself. It was two weeks later that Sergeant Preston reported to Inspector Conrad in the latter's office at the top of White Pass. You sent for me, sir? Oh, yes, Sergeant. Please sit down. There was an elderly woman sitting beside the inspector. She wore a bonnet and a long wool cape, a strange figure to be found at the gateway to the Yukon. Uh, this is Mrs. Scott, Sergeant. How do you do? I am pleased to meet you. Oh, uh, Sergeant, you checked the credentials of three men who came through here. Let's see. The day before yesterday, Kane Duncan, his nephew, Jeff Warden, and a guide, Pierre Cartier. Oh, yes, sir. I remember them well. They were heading for Mount Polaris in the St. Elias range. Had a long talk with our guide about the best way to get there. Anything wrong, sir? Wrong? Mr. Keynes brought Jeff up here to murder him. What? It's horrible. Now, easy, Mrs. Scott, easy. Here's a diary, Sergeant. Belongs to Kane Duncan. Read this page. Thank you, sir. Mr. Scott found it in Duncan's desk the day after he sailed from Seattle with the boy. We leave tomorrow. The boy won't come back. All my troubles will be over. I've glanced through the rest of the diary, and I assure you, Mrs. Scott is perfectly justified in her suspicions. Kane Duncan has lost a great deal of money. He's dipped into a trust fund belonging to the boy. He and his brother Joseph will inherit the boy's money if he dies. I believe that sentence you read, Sergeant, establishes the intent to commit murder. You've got to stop it. Is the other brother involved? There's no evidence of that. Oh, no. Uh. Climbing the mountain was all Mr. Kane's idea. About this guide, Cartier, Sergeant. Uh, perfectly trustworthy. I know him well, sir. Duncan won't try anything on the way to the mountain. The guy doesn't intend to climb it with them. No, sir. But if you can overtake them before they reach the mountain... You well... must, you must. At that moment, the door of the office opened and Joseph Duncan stepped inside. Sir, what do you mean I by coming... I beg your pardon if I'm intruding. I've been looking for this lady. Mr. Joseph. Yes, Ada. You followed me here. Well, what did you expect I'd do after I read your letter? I was fortunate in being able to get the ship the morning after I returned from Portland. We made good time. We docked at Skagway only a few hours after you. They told you at the hotel I'd come up here. Yes. I take it that you're Joseph Duncan. I'm Inspector Conrad, and this is Sergeant Preston. How do you do, sir? How do you do? Has Ada told you everything she wrote me? I have, and the inspector's promised to do something about it. What's your opinion of the case, Mr. Duncan? Well, that is a hard question, Inspector. Kane is my brother. Is that the diary, Sergeant? Yes. He should be confronted with it, at any rate. Or is it too late for that? They passed through here the day before yesterday. Then there's no chance of catching them before they reach the mountain? There may be. You seem to agree with the sergeant that that's where the real danger lies. Well, it's a difficult ascent. Especially the east phase, where they're going to make the try. I've done a lot of climbing myself. I've been imagining, well, accidents. There's a glacier to be crossed three quarters of the way up. There are wide crevasses that must be jumped, sheer cliffs to be scaled. The peak is over 15,000 feet high. If anything happens to the boy before I reach them, your brother will be charged with murder. Oh, you must stop him. I'll start at once, Mrs. Scott. Let, uh, let me go with you, Sergeant. I'll travel faster alone. I won't go. hold you up. I'm in good condition. And if you don't catch them before they reach the mountain, climbing is always easier for two men than one. Well, that's true. Then... Let me go with you. That might be a good idea, Inspector. Whatever you say, Sergeant. Good. Uh, go back to Skagway and wait for me there, Ada. Do you have plenty of money? Plenty. Bring the boy back with you, Mr. Joseph. I hope that I shall bring him back alive. Anytime you're ready, Sergeant. Let's see about horses and supplies. When Sergeant Preston and Joseph Duncan rode down from White Pass that afternoon, King ran by his master's side. The trail to the west was rough, and the great dog found it easy to match the horse's pace. They traveled all that night and rested the next morning on the shores of Lake Kusaya. Then on and on. From Lake Kusaya, the trails climbed steadily. Dalton Post was over 5,000 feet above sea level. 
But even so, when Polaris could at last be seen, that was the evening of the third day, the peak rose sheer and white and awe-inspiring, high above the surrounding country. If you can keep going tonight, Duncan, we should reach it by morning. A little rest, Sergeant, an hour or two. That's all I need to make it. All right. The horses need a rest, too. Hold like it. Hold, fella. He's up. The stop was made and supper was eaten. Duncan slept for an hour, and then they were in the saddle again. At daybreak, they saw the remains of a campfire at the foot of the mountain, and three horses hobbled near it. Hold like it. Hold on. He's up, fella. We're too late. They started up. This isn't an old campfire. They were here only a few hours ago. It's a few hours. It's my fault we didn't catch them. I expected to find Cartier here. He must have gone part of the way up with them. But didn't he tell you that he wasn't going to climb the mountain? He won't go to the top, that's sure. How about you? How are you feeling? I'm fine. Still want to come with me? Of course. Then get your horse unsaddled. From now on, every second counts. For the first thousand feet, the slope was covered with a stunted growth of spruce. Above that, there was no vegetation, and the perpetual snow began. By noon, the glacier was reached, and they started across it toward the peak. This was a respite from climbing, and gave legs and lungs a rest. But there were many crevasses in the glacier, great cracks hundreds of feet deep, and some of them were too wide to jump. Good thing there's a snow bridge over this one. Yes, you think it'll hold our weight? Oh, it should, and we won't take any chances. Tie your rope around your waist. I'll drive a spike in the ice on this side and walk the rope around it. Then if you fall, you won't fall far. Well, let's see. Please, in fact. The precautions were taken, but the thickly crusted snow supported Duncan easily. King trotted across behind him. Then it was the sergeant's turn. He, too, tied a rope around his waist and threw the other end across the crevasse to Duncan. Duncan drove a spike deep into the ice and warped the rope around it. All set. Come on. The sergeant started across. Suddenly, there was an ominous rumble from deep in the crevasse. The glacier began to move, closing the crevasse. The snow bridge began to collapse. We'll continue our story in just a moment. Say, Dad, Mother, Sister, Brother... The whole family goes for this breakfast treat. Quaker puffed rice or Quaker puffed wheat. The ready-to-serve cereal shot from guns. Uh, Open up. Open up in the name of the law. Hey, you. Oh, what's going on here? Well, uh, say, who are you? Me? You kidding? I'm an officer of the law. Well, I, uh... Now, say, bud. I heard some shooting in here, and I... Oh, well, look, officer. What you heard was me explaining about the gun that shoots Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat. Glory be. Young man, that's the gun that's got them all beat. Oh? Sure. Now, a fellow like me works pretty hard. On your feet all day. You need a good breakfast. And that's where Quaker Puff rice and Quaker Puff wheat comes in, huh? Right, me lad. Yes, the cereal shot from guns furnish extra food values of restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. Just pour on the old milk or cream, top with fruit, and you know what? What? Laddie, there's no beating that eaten. That's what. <laughs> yes, sir, that's a mighty good tip. Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice are actually exploded up to eight times normal size to make them crisp and tender. These premium grains are shot through and through with nut-like flavor, too. Just remember, the original crisp, fresh wheat or rice shot from guns is never sold in bags or bulk. Ask for Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat in the big red and blue package with the smiling Quaker man on the front. Now to continue our story. As the snow bridge across the crevasse began to collapse, the sergeant started to run. So intent was he getting across that he could not see what Duncan did. Duncan deliberately whipped the rope free of the spike. There was nothing to stop the sergeant if he should fall. But at that same instant, and purely by instinct, King grabbed the rope in his jaws and pulled as hard as he could. 
sudden jerk catapulted the sergeant toward the rim of the crevasse, and he fell onto the solid ice just as the snow bridge dropped from beneath his feet. He pulled himself away from the edge. Thank you, boy. Thanks for the help. Good dog. Well, you all right? Of course. Don't tell King I wouldn't have fallen, even if he hadn't lent a hand. What? What's the matter with you, man? You're shaking. Let me see. It was a narrow escape. <laughs> suppose, a, suppose a rope hadn't held. I mean, suppose a spike had been pulled out of the ice. I, I wouldn't have been able to hold you. Oh, King would have given you some help. He did, even if it wasn't needed. Come on, let's get going. See those clouds gathering around the peak? There's going to be some nasty weather before long. Blizzard? Could be. Come on. As they neared the far end of the glacier at the foot of the final ascent, they saw a campfire and a man putting up a tent on the lee side of a great snow-covered boulder. Have we caught up with them? Have they stopped to make camp? I'd like to think so, but there's only one man. Yes, that's right. Hello there. Hello. It's Pierre, the guide. Sergeant Preston. Well, this is one great big surprise. But why are you here? Well, why are you here? You mean why I put up the tent? That's right. Hello. We figure if Monsieur Duncan, Monsieur Warden, get to the top of the peak and start down, they will not get farther than this before it is dark. Oh. We spend the night here. Only, I wish they had spent the rest of the afternoon here, too. Why? Huh. I do not have to tell you what those clouds up there mean. No. How long ago was it Mr. Duncan and Mr. Warden left you here? Uh, it's maybe 30 minutes. Oh, we haven't done badly, Duncan. We'll have to do better. I can't see them. They work around to the east as they climb. They'd have done better to try the west. That's an easier slope. We, oui, but it is always the same with people who like to climb mountains, though. They do not like the easy way. Let's go, Duncan. Yes, I'm, I'm with you. Why, for why you go up there, Sergeant? I'll tell you all about it when we get back here. Go on, King. <laughs> King started up the ice-covered slope ahead of the sergeant and Duncan, but he was unable to lead the way for long. The sergeant and Duncan literally pulled themselves up from one precarious hole to the next, and the dog was forced to search until he found an easier ascent, but he always met them at the higher level. Hello, King. Back with us again? There's no foothold above us. Where do we go now? Follow the ledge to the right. But it stops where that big boulder is sticking out. No, the ledge extends about a foot beyond the rock. Well, that's not much. There's a drop of a thousand feet there. I'd advise you not to look down. The ledge may be wider beyond the rock. There may be some way up the cliff there. We'll see. When the sergeant reached the point where the ledge narrowed down to a scant 12 inches, he started to edge around the projecting face of the ice-covered cliff. Duncan was only a step behind him. A deadly resolution gleamed in his eyes. He raised an arm. But suddenly King, who had been standing beside Duncan on the inside of the ledge, forced his way in front of him. The sight of the dog's bared teeth made Duncan step back. And before he could recover, the sergeant was out of reach. Come on. Widen's out all right. Just take it easy along that narrow stretch. Yes, all right. Beyond the cliff projection, Duncan joined the sergeant, and the sergeant pointed to a crack in the cliff about three feet wide that ran straight up to a ledge nearly a hundred feet above, the sort of fissure that is usually called a chimney. There's the way up, Duncan. But I'm afraid it won't do for you, King. You'll have to turn back here. The great dog watched his master step into the chimney, brace his shoulders against one side and his feet against the other, and then start to force himself up using hands and feet alternately. He watched Duncan follow the sergeant, and he growled his distrust of the man. Then he turned back along the ledge, but King was not acknowledging defeat. His master was evidently climbing to the top of the mountain, and there must be some way in which he could follow them. It took the sergeant a full 20 minutes to reach the top of the chimney. He crawled out of it and looked up at the sky once more. The peak was completely hidden by a mass of clouds now. The wind was rising, and a few snow pellets bit hard into the sergeant's cheek. He turned and helped Duncan up through the chimney. There. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now rest a little. The next stage is easier. Have you... Have you still got your gun? My gun? Yes. Your holster's empty. I know. I stuck it inside my shirt. It was in the way. There. If the sky looked bad before, it looks worse now. As I can see, and the wind... We're in for it, all right. There may be more shelter up farther. You mean where we can stop and wait for the storm to blow over? No, that isn't what I mean. Of course, you can stop any time you want to. No, not here. This ledge is narrow, and it feels... And if the wind gets any stronger, 
I don't think I can hang on. You want to go down through the chimney to the level below? No, I can't. I've got to go on. Just lead the way and I'll follow. We'll tie ourselves together. I'll help you all I can. Fine. About 200 feet above the sergeant and only 100 feet from the summit of the peak, Jeff Warden had found a natural cave and had crawled into it. A moment later, his uncle followed him. What's the matter? I twisted my ankle. I don't think I can go any farther. Nonsense. Of course you can't. You're not going to quit this close to the top, are you? I don't want to, but wouldn't it be better to wait here until the storm blows over? What for? The wind isn't too bad. There's only a little snow. There's a ledge about 20 feet above here and easy footholds all the way to it. From there on, it's a gradual slope all the way to the top. How about it? My ankle. Let me have a look at it. Oh, it's, it's only twisted. Then you can stand on it, all right. I told you that climbing this mountain would be a real test of your courage. What's the matter? You going to fail? Are you afraid? No, I'm not. You'll have to prove it to me. Well, there's nothing wrong in waiting a little. You've lost your nerve. I haven't. I... I'll show you. That's better. <laughs> a hundred feet more and then there's nothing to worry about at all. Going down will be easy. Go on. How far are you? But two men left the shelter of the cave. Kane Duncan began to climb. Jeff gritted his teeth against the pain in his ankle and followed. Ten feet above the ledge, they disappeared in the whirling, wind-driven snow. It was less than a minute later that Sergeant Preston pulled himself up to the ledge outside the opening of the cave. All right, Duncan. Here, shall dig it. Here, I'll give you a hand. That's it. Thank you. Look, a cave. Yes. Sergeant, uh, I've been thinking. Yeah, mighty close to the top. It isn't far. Well, it's entirely possible that we've passed them. This has been a record climb. It would be easy to pass them, you know that. Just picking a different way up. Wouldn't it be wiser for both of us to stop right here where there's shelter until the weather clears up? You crawl in the cave and... Wait a minute. Right. Inside, the snow... A man's been lying down in there. And look, footprints. Well, they could have been made a long time ago. There's no tenant. Yes, there is. The snow's drifting into that cave fast, and the footprints aren't anywhere near filled. They were made just a few minutes ago. Your brother and your nephew are right ahead of us. They've gone on up to the top. What are we waiting for? Come on. It took the sergeant and Joseph Duncan only five minutes to reach the narrow ledge above the cave. And there they saw a man lying on the ground. The slope above him was blotted out by the snow. Duncan, that's the boy. Well, it, it could be. Jeff! Hello! Who is it? Uncle Joe! Hello, my boy. Where's Kane? He's gone up to the top. I, I've got a bad ankle and I couldn't make it any farther. I guess Uncle Kane's pretty disgusted with me. Here he comes. Joe! Perfectly correct. What? Who's that with you? Hey, this is Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police. Don't you remember me? We met at White Pass. Of course he remembers, but I... I don't understand. Why are you here? Because inside his pocket, he has a diary that belongs to you. A diary in which you wrote that you were going to murder Jeff. What? Ridiculous. In black and white, in your own handwriting. What? How did he get it? From Ada, you fool. I've heard enough. Kane Duncan... You're under arrest in the name of the Queen. Oh, no, I'm not. You're covered, Sergeant. No, it... As Kane went for his gun, the sergeant's hand started for his own holster. But Joseph, standing behind him, grabbed his wrist and prevented his completing the draw. Oh, that's right, Sergeant. So you're in on this, too. Uncle Joe. Yes, I do. Twice I tried to dispose of you on the way up here, but your dog prevented it. Is that so? The crevice in the grazier. One of the ledges down below. That doesn't matter now. I warn you not to try anything, Sergeant. Kane will shoot if I tell him to. Why don't you? I'll take your gun first. And now I think it would be a good idea if you and Jeff marched over to the right. Are you sure there's a big enough drop over there? About 200 feet. It'll be quite enough. Murderers! They're both murderers! Get up. He has a bad ankle. Do you mind if I help him? No. Go ahead. Sergeant. You're not going to let them make a step on that gun. No, they can't. I, I won't. We can't argue with bullets. Try to stand up. Before the sergeant turned to help the boy, he had seen a welcome friend. Come on. King was running down the slope from the top of the mountain. When the sergeant judged that he was directly behind Kane, he shouted a command. Get him, Kane! The great dog leaped at Kane and knocked him to the ground. No, no, 
Joe Duncan turned to see what was going on, and like a flash, the sergeant was on top of him and had twisted his gun hand behind his back. For a moment, they wrestled on the very brink of the precipice. Then Joe relinquished his hold on the gun, and the sergeant shoved him back from the edge. A second later, he picked up Kane's gun. All right, King, let him up now, boy. The two brothers were covered. Well, gentlemen, perhaps you'll believe me. You're under arrest in the name of the Queen. <laughs> a week later, the sergeant reached White Pass with his prisoners, and the inspector made a final disposition of the case as far as the Yukon was concerned. Well, you'll have to take them down to Vancouver for trial, sergeant. Seattle's close. Your witnesses will find it easy to be on hand. Jeff won't find it easy, sir. No, feel sorry for the boy. The realization that those two men, all the family he has, planned to kill him. Well, at least they didn't get away with it. Oh, uh, I've been reading your report again, Sergeant. It must have been a close thing at the top of the mountain. It was, sir. How did King manage to get up there? Well, that was simple, wasn't it, boy? <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, you see, sir, dogs have more sense when it comes to mountain climbing than human beings do. When he couldn't follow me any longer up the east face, he simply circled around to the west where the slope is much more gradual. And you managed to get there in time, didn't you, King Boy? That's why this case is closed. In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Friday's adventure. Ask Mother, she knows. Yes, Mother knows that quality comes first in a food. That's why Quaker Puff wheat and Quaker Puff rice are made from only the premium grains of wheat or rice. What's more, Mother likes the fact that wheat or rice shot from guns makes an easy-to-fix, economical, deluxe family breakfast with milk or cream and fruit. For added health benefits, natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron are restored in Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. Buy both delicious kinds tomorrow. Listen Friday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the case of the generous hobo. King and I were on the way back from our first winter patrol when hobo, a big dog and a good friend of King's, came racing toward us with a hunter's cap in his mouth. There were stains on the cap, blood stains. And that cap, that clue, led us straight to evidence of robbery and murder. Be sure to hear this exciting adventure Friday. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Fred Flowerday, and supervised by Charles D. Livingston. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at the same time by Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns. Remember, for delicious hot breakfast, enjoy Quaker Oats. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Delicious, nutritious, makes you feel ambitious. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. And here's why Quaker Oats is called the giant of the cereals. There's more growth, more endurance in oatmeal than any other whole grain cereal. So make your hot breakfast nourishing Quaker Oats. Quaker and Mother's Oats are the same. This is Jay Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice.